The Five Nights at Freddy's security breach has been released for over two years now, but many mysteries still lie within the Pizzaplex. There's the mystery of the sticky note room, the messages Gregory receives, and there's one mystery that connects to many other FNAF games that still hasn't been solved. And of course, I'm talking about Burn Trap. Throughout this channel, I've made many videos attempting to solve who is Burn Trap, where he is in Ruin, if he's connected to the Mimic, and even what his original purpose was in Security Breach. And by answering each of these mysteries, I think we can finally definitively solve the character of Burn Trap. So in this video, I'm going to combine three different solutions that solve this character while also including why solving his original purpose is just as important. So let's finally answer who Burn Trap is with one single video, starting with the first solution, which is a simple one. In Ruin, what if Burn Trap was right in front of us? First, let's go over what we saw in the Burn Trap ending of Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. At the end of the game, Glamrock Freddy and Gregory venture down to the abandoned pizzeria from the end of Five Nights at Freddy's 6. And there we see the blob in Burn Trap who is kept alive using a charging station. Burn Trap takes control of Freddy using these monitors before Gregory burns down him and the pizzeria. And then in the ending, we see Burn Trap try and escape before the blob grabs him and it's assumed they both burned in that fire. And we then see Gregory and Freddy escape successfully and in the final moment, we see them on top of a hillside. Now, up until Ruin's release, this was considered as the canon ending as it's one of the only endings we got a cinematic scene for and it made the most sense timeline-wise. But then, Ruin was released and with this DLC, we learned that the Princess Quest ending was actually canon and not the Burn Trap ending. We know this because of various things like the fact that Cassie is using the same Vanny mask Vanessa leaves behind, Freddy is missing his head and has a hole in his chest like we saw in the ending, and one of the arcade machines has a golden sword through it meaning the virus was defeated like we saw in the Princess Quest minigames. But what does this mean for the Burn Trap ending? Well, what the majority of the fanbase have agreed on and what I personally believed in as I even mentioned this in multiple videos now was that the Burn Trap ending was no longer canon like we believed in, which meant Burn Trap and the Blob never even existed. Throughout Ruin, comic book star drawings can be found of each of Security Breach's endings, and to me, this was the franchise's way of saying they're not canon to the timeline anymore. And this included the Burn Trap ending, which was more confirmation that this ending wasn't canon. But when walking down to the abandoned pizzeria, the blob can be seen through the whole very wall before retracting itself, meaning that not only does this character exist after all, but Burn Trap must also exist since it wouldn't make sense for one to exist without the other. But how can this be possible if we know for a fact that the ending isn't canon? Well, the most popular theory that I actually have to disagree with is that the Princess Quest ending and the Burn Trap ending are both canon, and here's why. Never in the FNAF franchise has more than one ending been canon. Ever since FNAF 3, when more than one ending was even available, only one has been canon that the timeline has followed. For example, it wouldn't make sense for the good and bad ending from FNAF 3 to be canon as they would be contradicting themselves, and I think this applies to all games with more than one ending. But either way, let's look at some evidence in favor of this ending, with the first simply being that the reason the Pizzaplex is destroyed and withered is because of the fire, which which would make sense. And right before the mimic is revealed, we see Gregory's backpack, meaning he's been down there before when he defeated Burn Trap. Now again, all of this would make sense, but there's more evidence disproving this ending ever happened, starting with the simple fact none of these endings would be possible if one of them already happened. If the Princess Quest ending took place first, then there's no way they could have gone down to the FNAF 6 pizzeria since Freddy loses his body and then we see him leave with Vanessa. If the Burn Trap ending took place first, then they wouldn't have been able to go back up to the Pizzaplex since it was made very clear that the elevator would only work for one trip. And by that time, the pizzeria has already begun to collapse, so I find it hard to believe that they would be able to go all the way back up up and stop Fanny. Again, no matter what order these endings would take place, it just wouldn't be possible. Some other small details I wanted to mention are in FNAF Ruin, the FNAF 6 pizzeria doesn't look to have been affected by a fire, especially in the room Burn Trap was in. It looks completely fine, and again, it has no effects of a fire. And finally, the only time we see Glamrock Freddy is in Phaser Blast, which is where we last saw him in the Princess Quest ending. But now that I think it's pretty clear the Princess Quest ending is canon, the Burn Trap ending isn't, and that Burn Trap still exists as a character, the question still stands where is he in Ruin? Well, the answer is pretty simple and not that complicated like other theories suggest like the one that believes Burn Trap is now part of the Blob. Although that would be really interesting, when we do see the Blob again, there's really nothing that leads me to believe that Burn Trap is now a part of it. We don't see any of his animatronic parts and the Blob's eyes aren't even glowing purple and aren't even glowing at all. There's also another theory that believes Burn Trap is now the Mimic, but this wouldn't make sense either as when comparing their designs, they are drastically different with almost no similarities. It's also hard to believe that Burn Trap who had 
flesh and different animatronic parts on him would turn into the mimic. But with all that said, I think that Burn Trap is simply still inside of his charging station in Ruin. Now I know that isn't as fulfilling as other theories, but the evidence is right there. During the Burn Trap boss fight in Security Breach, there's a way where you could enter the room where the charging station was, and there you could see that the door was slightly open. But in Ruin, when going to that exact same room, the charging station's door is now closed shut. The reason we don't see Burn Trap in Ruin is because he was never even released from his charging station. Think about it, the only reason Burn Trap was even freed was because Glamrock Freddy fell into the pizzeria. Now how exactly this triggered the charging station isn't that clear, but we can assume he was freed to take control of Freddy. So in Ruin, when Freddy was never down there, the charging station door never opened and he was never freed. But like I mentioned earlier in the video, we actually see Gregory's backpack in the lower levels of the pizzeria. Well, I think that only Gregory and Vanessa went back to the pizzeria at some point to set up the Mexus security system, not because they took down Burn Trap, because again, that never happened. We know this is newer technology, and the way Gregory talks about this system in the very last scene of Ruin, it makes it seem like he was the one who made it. But obviously, we can assume he had the help of Vanessa. But either way, the backpack was nowhere near Burn Trap or even the room he was in, as it's in the lower level next to the Mimic. So really, I don't think Gregory even knows about Burn Trap, as again, Freddy was never there to free him. And in terms of the Pizzaplex being destroyed and withered, I still think this was because of a fire, but using evidence from a newspaper at the entrance of the Pizzaplex, we learned that all of this was caused by an earthquake. Now this also isn't the most fulfilling answer, but it makes the most sense logically and it fits in with everything else I've discussed so far in this video. But because there's no more power in the Pizzaplex, we can assume the charging station stopped working, which would ultimately kill Burn Trap as this was the only thing keeping him alive. But finally, what does this mean for the future of Burn Trap? Well, unfortunately to me, this is telling us that he won't have a future in the franchise anymore. Now at one point, I do think William Afton was trying to come back in the form of Burn Trap, and originally he was going to have a much larger role. We know this because in the very first trailer we heard voice lines from William and we even saw Burn Trap at the end of it. When I first found you, you were nothing. You were small, pathetic, but now you are more. Are you ready? You will do as I say! You will bring me what I want! And if you fail me, then you will, both of you, burn! With the introduction of new characters like Cassie and the Mimic, it's hard to find ways they could keep Burn Trap in the new storylines. Especially since, in FNAF Hop Wanted 2, there's once again no mention of this character. To me, Burn Trap being trapped in the charging station is literally and metaphorically shutting the door on this character. Which again is unfortunate as I like the idea of Willie Matson coming back once more, but I don't see how this character can fit into any new projects. So with all that said, in Five Nights at Freddy's Ruin, Burn Trap is still inside of his charging station as Freddy and Gregory never actually went down to the FNAF 6 pizzeria since we know the Burn Trap ending was in canon. The only reason Gregory's backpack was found down there was because he came back to the Pizzaplex with Vanessa to set up the Mexus system. Them. But because of an earthquake killing all power in the Pizzaplex, Burn Trap's charging station failed to work properly, killing him and this character. But this is all just a theory. Now let's look at an answer that will connect him to another character from the franchise, the Mimic. So is Burn Trap the Mimic? But first, let's quickly recap each time we've seen these characters. In Security Breach, we saw Burn Trap featured as one of the main villains in the Burn Trap ending. He was being kept alive using a charging station, and he was awakened when Gregory and Freddy entered the abandoned Freddy Fazbear's Pizza location. Burn Trap then took control of Freddy using monitors in his office, and Gregory was forced to defeat him on his own. Using monitors of his own, Gregory was able to burn Burn Trap and his office while also fighting off the blob and its tentacles. Gregory is eventually able to burn down the pizzeria entirely with Burn Trap in it and he's able to presumably escape with Freddy. And while Freddy and Gregory are happily on a hillside, the Burn Trap ending fades to the credits. Now on the other hand, in the bad ending in Ruin, it's revealed that Gregory was not stuck in the Pizzaplex and that it was just instead the Mimic copying his voice to lure Cassie down to the sinkhole to set him free. But after Roxy rescues Cassie, the real Gregory contacts Cassie through the walkie-talkie and tells her to follow his instructions. After the Mimic defeats Roxy and begins to chase Cassie, Gregory gives her 
are specific instructions on how to navigate her way through the caves and how to escape the mimic. She is ultimately successful when she reaches the elevator and there the real Gregory reaches out to her once more. He tells her how he understands that what she did was for him and that he's sorry but they can't risk being followed so Gregory cuts the elevator making it fall and the ending fades to the credits. Now there are a couple of important things to note with each ending, especially with the burn trap ending with the most important thing being that it isn't actually canon. In Ruin we learn that the princess quest ending is actually canon and we have a lot of proof like this arcade machine with a golden sword through it. We also get these drawings made by Gregory that depict all of Security Breach's endings telling us that these endings aren't canon. This includes the burn trap ending as we unlock this drawing so again this ending isn't canon. But just because the burn trap ending isn't canon it doesn't mean that these characters don't exist. Just because the ending isn't canon doesn't mean that the sinkhole and charging station stop existing as we clearly see them in ruin and characters like the blob also don't stop existing. We also see the blob in ruin as a small easter egg when going down to the abandoned pizzeria. Meaning that burn trap also exists and is somewhere in the pizza plex so again the whole argument is what if he's in the pizza plex in the form of the mimic. Now when tackling a question as complex as this one I think the easiest place to start is by simply looking deep into both of their designs. At the surface when comparing them side by side there doesn't seem to be a single similarity at all but when we start to look deeper that's when the similarities are obvious. When looking at their legs they're somewhat similar. Both of the left feet have a different foot than the right one and both of their left feet only have three toes. Both of their left hands have five fingers and their necks are also slightly similar. And finally they both have a similar pose where their left arm is raised but their wrist is flat. But at the same time they have many differences. The shape and sizes of their torsos do not match at all. Burn Trap's right hand has five fingers while the Mimic's right hand only has four fingers. And the shape of their heads are also drastically different and of course Burn Trap has pieces of flesh around his body and a human like jaw with human like teeth. And the Mimic has none of these as he doesn't have flesh around his body and he has animatronic like teeth. And finally Burn Trap has purple eyes while the Mimic has orange eyes so really they do have more differences than similarities but the fact that their left arms and legs are so similar must mean something. But what would explain all the differences? Well the best way I can explain it is to look at Spring Trap and Scrap Trap's design. They are supposed to be the exact same character but they have many differences. Their bodies don't match with Scrap Trap's body being more withered and skinnier. They also have different eyes with Scrap Trap only having one eye and it being silver. And of course their heads are very different as we can see Scrap Trap's skull and his jaws much wider. But the reason they're so different is because of the fire at Fazbear's Fright. So what if because of the earthquake that destroyed the pizza plex and because of all the damage done to the structure, Burn Trap's design drastically changed to the Mimic's design. This would make them the exact same character but really this argument could go both ways and I don't think we can make a final decision based on just their designs. So what if we instead look at their roles in each game and look how each character functions. In Security Breach, Burn Trap is trying to take control of Freddy and we can assume he already has control of the other animatronics. We assume he's doing this as it's actually Willie Mafton coming back in the form of Burn Trap to take back his life and power. The Mimic has similar motives where he's doing everything in his power to become free and presumably escape the pizza plex. Now why he exactly wants to escape so bad isn't necessarily clear. But if it's true that the Mimic is actually glitch trapped that just means that the Mimic is trying to copy Willie Mafton and his actions and the Mimic would just be another way that Willie Mafton could return, making the Mimic's and Burn Trap's motives almost identical. In terms of how Burn Trap functions, it looks like this charging station is the only thing keeping him alive and even when he's free he looks weak and fragile, almost as if Burn Trap wasn't done being made. Even the way he walks is also very limp and weak so again I think without this charging station he wouldn't be able to stay alive. But the Mimic on the other hand clearly doesn't need a charging station to survive. We can assume he was stuck behind that concrete wall for some time now without a charging station and again he appears to be just fine. Even the way the Mimic walks is much different than Burn Trap and he's able to run while chasing Cassie through the caves. He also appears to be much stronger than Burn Trap and there's a clear difference between the two physically. But this just leaves us right where we were with their designs, with that being that the argument can go either way. So to finally make a definitive decision, I'm going to turn to this video, How Ruin Secretly Solved the Burn Trap Debate by Underscore. In this video, he goes over how this new texture is in Ruin in the vent leading to Burn Trap's room and it depicts his right arm clawing into the vent. I recommend watching the full video to understand the full context and it's also just an amazing theory that we can learn a lot from. But looking back at the texture, it's also in the vent leading right to the Mimic's room, leading him and others to believe that both textures were left by Burn Trap who is also the Mimic. The reason the second claw mark is even there is because the Mimic left it there when he was trapped by Vanessa and Gregory. Although I like this idea, I actually think it means the opposite. The reason that they are the exact same textures to mislead us but one was left 
left by burn trap while the other one was left by the mimic making these two different claw marks that were left by two different animatronics which also leads me to my definitive answer being that burn trap and the mimic are two different animatronics and are not the same villain alongside this claw mark in the vent leading to burn trap's office we also see this purple glow effect in the vent and i think this is burn trap leaving behind a trail this purple trail is found nowhere else in the game and this includes the vent leading to the mimic's room if they were the same animatronic wouldn't we see a purple glow effect in either the vent or room signifying that the mimic is actually burn trap we actually don't see any other hints to burn trap in the mimic's room which only solidifies this idea looking back at the purple glow effect it leads right into this room where gregory and freddy fought burn trap in security breach and in that room there's this charging station like i mentioned earlier in the video i believe that burn trap needs a charging station to survive so what if he went through this fan to try and find another charging station leaving behind this purple glow effect he could have also found a way to go up the sinkhole where there's another charging station in the fnaf 6 pizzeria which would also keep him alive i think ruin purposely hides these two rooms from the player because that's where burn trap is trying to survive so because of their designs that are too different to be called the same because these two characters function drastically different and because the mimic has no other hints to burn trap i think it's safe to say that burn trap and the mimic are not the same character there have now been two fnaf projects where we haven't seen burn trap and it could be very well that we won't see this character anymore in the franchise personally i do believe and hope that we do see burn trap once again as a main villain as not only is burn trap's story not finished yet but of course the mimic story also isn't finished and there's so much that can be done with both these characters there is a popular theory going around that believes all the villains in the newer games will come together to either create a new villain or will serve as the main villains to a new fnaf project burn trap the blob and the mimic are all still down in the pizza plex and their stories could be continued as the main villains in a new fnaf game next let's look at a solution that i haven't seen many people in the community talk about which are the ruin caves so let's look at how the caves might answer where burn trap is in ruin but first i think it should be clear that the burn trap ending from five nights at freddy's security breach is not canon in ruin we learn that the princess quest ending was actually canon and not the burn trap ending we know this because of various reasons like the fact that cassie is using the same vanny mask that vanessa left behind freddy is missing his head and has a hole in his chest like we saw in the ending and one of the arcade machines even has a golden and sword through it meaning the glitch shot virus was defeated like we saw in the princess quest mini games and throughout ruin comic book style drawings can be found of each of security breaches endings and to me this was the franchise's way of saying they're not canon to the timeline anymore this included the burn trap ending which was more confirmation that this ending isn't canon but when walking down to the abandoned pizzeria the blob can be seen through the hole of a wall before retracting itself Meaning that not only does this character exist after all, even though their ending was in canon, but Burn Trap must also exist since it wouldn't make sense for one to exist without the other. So this also means that Burn Trap must be somewhere in the pizza plex when Ruin takes place, but where? Well, let's start to go over the crucial piece of evidence that I haven't seen anyone else in the community talk about, which are the caves. Once you make it to the sinkhole, you go through different caves until you find the mimic, and you have to escape him by once more going through a cave. But one section of these caves is the key to solving Burn Trap in other mysteries from the pizza plex and of course i'm talking about the cave with the waterfall the blue water the blue mushrooms and the blue rocks now at the surface it may just seem like a normal cave but it's so much more than that i think this cave is what powers the pizza plex and everything inside of it let me explain i believe that the blue water we see in this cave is the same water or liquid that we see in the charging stations they're both light blue and when going near the water and the liquid from the charging station we hear static meaning they're electrically charged And we know the liquid in the charging station powered the animatronics and even gave them life. In the Chica segment in Ruin, we see Chica fall into a broken charging station and she is revived by it as previously she was destroyed completely and couldn't move. But after she came into contact with the liquid, she became alive once more and was something Cassie needed to run away from. So we can assume if an animatronic came into contact with the water in the cave, something similar would happen as they would be receiving an extreme amount of power. And we see this exact thing happen with Cassie's flashlight as she enters the cave. The minute she gets near the water, her flashlight overcharges and shuts 
lights off. Originally, it was believed that her flashlight ran out of battery, but couldn't Cassie just say that? Instead, she gets frustrated that the flashlight randomly turns off, and again, I think it was because of the electrically charged water. So if we can assume Fazbear's Entertainment used this water to power the charging stations and even the machines used to recharge your flashlight, then we can also assume that they would harvest as much of this energy for the rest of the pizza plex. And I think the other caves already proved this. All of the caves inside the sinkhole have the same design and details like these rocks. But the major difference between this cave and the other caves is that these rocks in the caves are missing the blue luminescent light and they're simply missing the blue water. Insinuating that Fazbear's Entertainment has already extracted the water and power source from these caves to power the pizza plex, except for this one small cave that still has the blue water. But finally, how does this cave connect to Burntrap and his whereabouts? Well, in one of my last videos, I went over how Burntrap needs a charging station to survive, as in the Burntrap ending, that's where his body was being kept alive, and without it, he seems weak and fragile as he can barely walk. And in that same video, I pointed out the fact that Burntrap left this room and his charging station through this vent. We know this because of the purple glow to it as he was leaving a trail behind and it's assumed wherever we find this purple glow, that's where Burntrap has been. So I think that he left this room to try and find another charging station so he can keep himself alive. As there's the charging station that was in the room where Gregory and Freddy first found Burntrap, or the charging station found in the FNAF 6 pizzeria. But we can assume that those charging stations have been destroyed after the damage done to the Pizzaplex, and in Help Wanted 2, we even see this charging station completely destroyed. So where else would Burntrap go to save himself? Well, he would have to go to the only power source left, this cave. Now I know that might seem far-stretched and random, but realistically, this is the only form of energy left in the Pizzaplex that would save Burntrap, and there's one piece of evidence evidence that proves this. Remember that purple glow trail that Burnchap left behind when he left his room through the vent? Well in that video, I stated that we only saw this purple glow in this vent and nowhere else in the Pizzaplex. Meaning Burnchap wasn't in any of the areas where Ruin takes place, as again, wherever we see this purple glow, that's where Burnchap has been. But this is actually wrong, as we see this purple glow effect in only one other area in the entire game, and that's in the cave. At the very top of the cave, we see this small area that also has the same purple glow effect from the vent that is only found in these two areas, insinuating that Burntrap was there. We also find these interesting textures on this rock, and maybe they were left there by Burntrap. Now, it's not clear if Burntrap actually made his way to the top of the cave or if he was just in the cave in general, but this purple trail has to confirm that Burntrap was in that cave at one point, and he most likely visited the cave after leaving through the vent. But this also means that Burntrap is still somewhere in the Pizzaplex or in the sinkhole, but it's not clear where specifically he is as we don't see this purple trail anywhere else in the game. But the fact that it's in this cave means it's important to his whereabouts, and again, at one point he was in this cave. This also means it came to contact with the electrically charged water, which we can assume would have a similar effect as the charging station, so maybe this blue water would save him and give him life like it did for Chica. But because there's so much water and because this energy would be massive, we can only imagine what effect it would have on Burntrap and it could possibly even make him stronger. And although the next game in the franchise is going to be FNAF Secret of the Mimic, which is an origin game for the Mimic, meaning it won't be the next game in the timeline, I still think the game after Secret of the Mimic will revisit the sinkhole and the Pizzaplex as there's still so much left to be said like the character of Burntrap. I've already made plenty of videos covering what this game will look like, but no matter what this gameplay looks like, I think it's safe to say that Burntrap will be a part of it in some way, and this cave is our first look at that. So because the water from this cave is actually a power source that powers the Pizzaplex like the charging stations, it makes the most sense that Burntrap would want to reach this cave as he needs the same water or liquid from the charging stations to keep him alive, which again are found in this cave. And we know he's successful in reaching this cave as we see a purple trail left by him at the very top of the cave. So though we don't know where he went after this cave, what we do know for certain is that he was in this cave at one point. Finally, let's look at Burntrap's original purpose in the FNAF franchise and if this original purpose answers who this character is. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, in the Scott Cawthon interview, we learn new details from the newer FNAF games, the movie, and even the books. And when covering FNAF Security Breach, Scott Cawthon had this to say about Burntrap and what his original plan was when discussing how he felt about the overall game. But I think in this case, it's okay. When it comes to Burntrap, Originally, Burn Trap was never supposed to move. He was supposed to just be something you saw in the corners, or like if you were walking past machinery, you might be able to peek in between two things and see him in the corner or propped up against a wall, almost like almost like a, a some kind of decaying movie prop. And you never fully understood what his purpose was. And he had a very specific purpose. And I'm not going to say what that purpose was, but realistically, he never 
moved. Well, obviously, that's not what we got in Security Breach. <laughs> in Security Breach, we got a capsule opening and purple smoke flowing out and him climbing out and coming to get you. <laughs> and so it's just not, not quite the same thing. So, Like he says in the small clip, it's obvious how different Burnshop was in Security Breach compared to his original idea, especially when considering that Burnshop was never supposed to move, which is almost hard to imagine. But what I think is the most important thing to take away from this clip is the fact that Burnshop wasn't supposed to move for a very specific purpose, but Scott Cawthon hides this purpose from us. So I want to solve what this original purpose was and if we're going to see Burntrap in a future FNAF project. In order to solve what his original purpose was, I think a perfect place to start is with the very first teaser trailer that gave us unused voice lines of Burntrap in a new scene that wasn't used in the final version of the game. So let's look at these cutscenes and see if they help us with answering what his purpose was. When I first found you, you were nothing. You were small, pathetic. But now, you want more? Are you ready? You will do as I say! You will bring me what I want! And if you fail me, then you will, both of you, burn! Realize. In the first voice line, we can assume it's Burntrap or Glitchtrap speaking to Vanessa before she would become Vanny as he's preparing her for what's to come. In the second voice line, we can assume this is actually Burntrap because of the slightly different voice, and again, I think he's still talking to Vanessa. When he refers to both of you, I think he's referring to Vanessa and Vanny as two separate entities, or he could simply be talking to Gregory and Vanny, but either way, I don't think any of these voice lines reveal to us what his purpose was, and neither does the last scene. Scott Cawthon made it clear that Burntrap was not supposed to move at all and in this clip we clearly see him moving and although we never saw the scene in the final game i still think this was created after burntrap's purpose was changed and this could just be an alternate scene to when he was revealed that's why we even see the purple smoke behind his arm and again all of this was most likely planned after the change so this just brings us right to the beginning what was his original purpose well i think it could be one of two ideas with the first simply being that the reason burntrap never moved was because he was actually a hallucination now this was actually a popular theory when security breach was first released and now it makes a lot more sense with Scott Cawthon's statement. The reason Burntrap would randomly appear throughout the Pizzaplex and wouldn't move is because he was simply a hallucination. And in the very first teaser trailer for Security Breach, in one of the shots, we might have actually seen this hallucination. In the very corner of this shot, we see what appears to be the outline of someone, and when brightening this image, we can see that this someone resembles Burntrap. We can see the outline of his face, and what if this was the very first tease of a hallucination of Burntrap before plans were changed? But if this was the case, what would be the purpose of Burntrap? Burntrap being a hallucination? Well, I think it could really only be for one reason, which is to show that Willie Mafton's presence is in the Pizzaplex. We know the last time we saw Willie Mafton was in Five Nights at Freddy's 6 when he was burned inside the pizzeria, and it's this pizzeria that is right under the Pizzaplex. So it could be possible that his soul is still inside the pizzeria which would allow him to access the Pizzaplex, which would then cause the hallucination of Burntrap. But of course this can be debated as it was assumed the last time we saw Willie Mafton's soul was in a purgatory in Five Nights at Freddy's Ultimate Custom Night, but maybe this would have been a way to set up Willie Mafton's return in another way before their plans changed with Burntrap. Or it could have been to prove another popular theory, being that Gregory was under Glitchtrap's control the entire time. Now although this topic can be a video on its own, Burntrap would serve the purpose to prove this as the only reason Gregory would be able to see Burntrap was to show he was under the virus's control. And this idea is more related to the novels and the GGY story, but I could still see this being one of the original plans. So what if Burntrap's original purpose as a hallucination was to show that Willie Mafton was still present in the pizza? Plex. But moving on to the next idea, what if his purpose is related to another character? Well, I think that his original purpose was the equivalent to what Vanny's purpose is in the final version. In Security Breach, Vanny would randomly appear throughout the game and she would make your screen glitch while trying to capture you, or she would just walk by you like we saw in this scene when we're in the charging station with Freddy. And I think Vanny's purpose is to tease a greater threat in the Pizzaplex and to tell the player that she's not alone. And this greater threat is of course Burn Trap in the very end of the game. So although this can be debated, I think Vanny's purpose was to set up Burntrap. So I think Burntrap's original purpose was to set up a greater threat in the Pizzaplex, and based on what we know, he would actually act very similar to Vanny. Instead of chasing the player like Vanny would, Burntrap would just instead stand still and would creepily be standing in different areas of the Pizzaplex. This would honestly be much scarier than seeing Vanny chasing you around as it would be chilling to 
just see him standing there. Maybe he would have also made your screen glitch or fill it with a purple light like the purple smoke from his charging station. But either way, he would have served the purpose of setting up the main villain and its ending. If Burn Shop was only supposed to stand still in certain areas, then we can assume he wouldn't have gotten his own ending and he wouldn't have been the main villain of the game. The same way, Vanny wasn't really the main villain of Security Breach. But if Burn Shop was setting up a greater threat, now the question is, who would that greater threat be? Well, I think the answer is obvious, as it would be the Mimic. Scott Cawthon also talks about the Mimic in this interview, stating how he's one of his favorite antagonists from the franchise. So what if the Mimic was originally set up in Security Breach with Burn Trap teasing his appearance? Meaning we would have gotten a Mimic ending instead of the Burn Trap ending. In this way, the Mimic would have had a more significant setup than how it felt when he was revealed in Ruin. But this would also mean that we would have seen Burn Trap in other projects as well if we're following the same timeline of events that Vanny appeared in. We could have possibly seen Burn Trap in FNAF Ruin or FNAF Help Wanted 2 as he would have had a greater role. But unfortunately, we never saw this happen as the last time Burn Trap had a direct appearance was in FNAF Security Breach. So really, no matter what Burn Trap's original purpose was, I think this would have set up more appearances like in Ruin or in Hope Wanted 2. But because his purpose was drastically changed, this never came to be, which also leads me to believe that Burn Trap won't have a role moving forward with FNAF. Although Burn Trap is one of my favorite characters in all of FNAF, I don't see how he could have a role in any of these newer games, especially when looking at the direction it's headed in. Looking at the interview once more, Scott Cotton stated how he could see different characters returning in the franchise once more, like Vanny or the Mimic. But he never brought up Burn Trap possibly returning, and he only mentioned Burn Trap when discussing his name and original purpose. So this also leads me to believe that he will no longer be in the franchise, especially when considering that he didn't appear in Ruin or in Help Wanted 2, and it's almost impossible to expect him to appear in the next project. So with that said, Burn Trap's original purpose was to set up Willie Mathson or the Mimic's return in some way. But his purpose was changed to be the main villain of Security Breach, which ultimately ended the possibility of him returning in new projects. And with all of that, this is everything we know about Burn Trap's original purpose. But with that said, these are three different solutions that solve the character of Burn Trap. So what do you guys think? Who is Burn Trap in the FNAF franchise? What is his purpose? And what was his original purpose in Security Breach? So make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. And thank you guys so much for watching.